And on screen, Kawhi Leonard, a large part of that, 37 points in 33 minutes. Game two was a slaughter of the Magic in the six on a Tuesday, but the location has shifted to Orlando, and uh, Orlando knows how to ball. Of course, right now, you are officially rocking with the best. Game time is on your screen. Roe Parrish, along with the Hall of Famer, Grant Hill, the NBA champion, Brendan Haywood, who I affectionately call the Big Patty. We're going to have oh, plenty yeah. of fun tonight. No doubt. Definitely glad to see you, too. So the playoffs continue. Just in case you didn't know, we have three games that are going to be for your entertainment. The Raptors and Mag Magic 7 p.m., the Celtics and Pacers at 8.30, then the Trailblazers and the Thunder close the night at 9.30. Portland trying to extend that to three games going up. So in pregame meeting, we're talking about the road teams that have the best chance to get a victory in the three contests we had tonight. B. Wood, I'll start with you. Who do you think has the best chance to win of the road team? Of the road team, I really think Portland has the best chance to win just because that backcourt is so dynamic. When you talk about Dame, you talk about McCollum. The fact that Dame has been getting the better of Russ in this series, and I think Dame really sees this as an opportunity to make up for what happened last year. I can definitely see him coming with the right type of focus, the right type of energy, and I think this team senses they have the chance to knock OKC out tonight right now. Can I help Petty the Big Petty? Absolutely. Not possible. Okay. I will go with the Raptors. Why? I, I think Toronto had a, a bad game one. They made the adjustments there. First of all, historically, they've just had bad game ones yeah. in the first round of the playoffs. So there's nothing, nothing new in that case. But they made the necessary adjustments. And I thought they just kind of they, they kind of out-toughed them. They out uh in terms of how they played against the, the Magic. They figured things out. They got their ball moving defensively that swarming defense with the length they have. Uh, Orlando's a young team. This is all very new for them. Uh, I think the Raptors sort of regain control, and they'll go in and, and, and get an easy victory in game three. Easy victory. Okay. All right. I like the sounds of that. So, with that being said, we discussed the road teams, but as far as the home team goes, Orlando, the Pacers, the Thunder. So, so, so back to you, G. Hill. Who has the best chance out of the home teams to become victorious? I affectionately disagree with B. Haywood. Okay. I think the Thunder. I think the Thunder have played poorly. Their defense has been bad. Offense has had no rhythm, no sync to it, no flow. Uh, they will make the necessary adjustments. Get the ball out of Lillard and McCullum's hands. Double team them, much like the Pelicans did last year in the first round of the playoffs. Make other people beat you. I think they'll come out, force turnovers, get out in transition, get some easy baskets. I think the Thunder win at home. Mm. They're going to need those buckets because we know the Thunder struggle to shoot from the outside. B. Wood, who you got? I think I'm going to go with the Indian. I think I'm going to go with the Patriots. Really? Yes, just because defensively they play very well. They had a chance uh, last game, really let the opportunity slip away. I think being home, getting energized, I think they're going to have a chance to do something special. So, so hold on for a second. I know you were selling the other day trying to make sure the NBA fans watch mm -hmm. the Boston and Pacers series. Is that yeah. what you're attempting to do right now? Hey, man, listen, man, you got to sell, man. <laughs> we, we're selling the NBA product out here. Now, a lot of people might not want to see a, 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 a rock fight, a defensive basketball game, but sometimes you got to sell that, okay? I got higher ups. I got bosses I got to report to. Of course, <laughs> hey, hey, we all do. Speaking of bosses, Kyle Lowry, he's always like a boss. He suits up for the playoff game. Number 52 tonight in Orlando, passing his BFF and former teammate DeMar DeRozan for the most games played in playoff history. Uh, he'd also like to get another win in the process. Number seven spoke with the media earlier today. I remember in past years you've talked about trying to trick yourself into treating every game like it's a game seven. Yeah. How do you do that? Play hard as hell. <laughs> I mean, you just got to really play hard and, and not think about what this is. You got to think of it as like, listen, this is the last game you might possibly could play. And it's not, you know, and it's not going to be like that, but you got to play hard. And that's the biggest thing we we're going to continue to do this play extremely hard. Does that Warriors blown lead in game two affect the way you coach, you know, if you have a big lead? A little bit. A little bit. I mean, it, it, it certainly crossed my mind the other night when it got up there to, to, to say, I didn't say anything to the guys, but I had to say some stuff to my assistants about it. I said, you guys watch that game last night, didn't you? Because they were, they were trying to sub, and I said, I ain't subbing. I ain't ready to sub. So I think part of it, part of it did go. I think Saul is a very uh, smart player, uh, moving to the floor uh, offensively, you know, with him spacing the floor, uh, give them, uh, opens up a lot of space for them and uh, puts a lot of pressure on the defense and defensively he's a smart defender. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've played him a lot over the years, so we, we know each other pretty well. Uh, you know, when it comes down to me, I just, you know, uh, things that I have to figure out in the first two games and I just have to come on in game three, be more aggressive. Uh, try to you know, help the team on that. Uh, we got to respond. You know, um, if we want to win this series um, or even win the next game, we got to respond. You know, they're going to be aggressive again with us. So we just got to be able to handle it and uh, continue to play our game. 
The Raptors' big three, Lowry, Leonard, Pascal Siakam put up 78 points alone. That's in comparison with the Orlando Magic, who set a, a, a pretty bad precedent, only scoring 82 points. That's definitely not good. That's the lowest that they've put out all season long. So with that being said, we've got to talk about the Orlando Magic and the Toronto Raptors. Covering those two teams is our own Jared Greenberg. Nice suit, like the hair, everything looks good. So go ahead and give <laughs> us that good information as far as we're talking about for the Magic. We know Vucevic, he struggled to get to that all-star level of playing so far in this series. What does he need to do in order to bounce back in game three at home? You know, it's, it's really interesting when you talk to both the Magic and Raptors separately about Nick Vucevic, who both teams feel he will be much more of a presence tonight. The Raptors feel that the Magic are going to force the issue, and the Magic know they need Vuce to be more of their offensive go-to guy. But when I talk to both of them separately, the Magic believe by breaking down their film study that Vooch has been double teamed the majority of the first two games. The Raptors, on the other hand, will tell you that, yeah, they did a lot of that in game one, but not much of that in game two. You know, I, I think that we're going to see a lot of different looks tonight, but as Steve Clifford talked about, you've got two different former defensive player of the years on the Raptors in Marcus Gasol, who's been primarily guarding Vooch, along with Kawhi Leonard, and then a guy who, for most of his career, has been in the running for defensive player or all-defensive team, and that's uh, Serge Ibaka. So a lot of different looks they're going to show. Uh, Marc Mark Gasol and, and Serge Ibaka are going to show tonight for Vucevic. So you talked about Kawhi Leonard, all-star. We all know his teammate, Kyle Lowry had his struggles in game one, bounces back in game two. You've been around him. What type of energy does he have right now? Do you see him having the same type of performance that he had in game two or one similar to game one? You know, I don't know what type of performance he'll have, Ro, but I can tell you the same type of energy he's displayed pretty much all season long he's had. I think that, you know, you heard Kyle talk about it in the comments from earlier today that he has learned throughout the course of his career as he becomes more and more experienced. And as Grant mentioned, the, the shortcomings in the playoffs are well documented for Kyle and the Raptors, that he's understood how to approach, especially mentally, each and every game, each and every possession. You know, the, the one thing we were joking about earlier today with Kyle was that he's such an avid golfer. And as, as Grant will tell you, down here at Orlando, there's some great golf courses. Now, aside from the severe weather that we had earlier today and actually still going on right now, the weekend might be a little better to play golf. Kyle said there will be no golf. This is a business trip. I am strictly focused on each and every game because I have to trick myself into believing it's a game seven. So you talk about that atmosphere in Orlando, of course, is great for golf, but also inside yeah. the arena has been very rowdy. We all know that they've been on fire in the second half of the season since January 31st, 13 and one on their home court, a lot of energy, and they seem to play very well. Will that continue tonight in Orlando? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of excitement here. And as I mentioned, the weather, they're hoping that that doesn't cause some extended uh, delay is getting into the building because of all the traffic that'll be out there but this will be a sold out building and I, I can tell you from being here in the regular season once this year I was pleasantly surprised with how rowdy this building gets and and people around the team believe that it'll be taken to another level here they've been waiting a long time to get a playoff game back here there will be some celebrities in the building there will be Tracy McGrady Jameer Nelson will be here the governor of Florida the newly elected governor of Florida will be here as well so a lot of people with a lot of eyeballs watching tonight's game here in Orlando Hey, Jared, this is Grant. I just want to say great job. I love the color of your tie. Maybe not the yeah. color of your jacket. Oh, come on, man. Don't be oh, a hater. I, well, you know, I do things for Brendan Haywood because he helps me pay the bills. So, That's you know my guy, I mean? man. Hey, yeah. every, every day from 10 to 1, Sirius XM Radio, me and Jared Greenberg. Shameless, <laughs> shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> not so shameless plug. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. All right. That's good to know. That is television's Jared Greenberg. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon, Jay. Thanks, B-Wood. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a, a shameless plug at all. C come on, man. That's, that's, come on. Hey, listen, I got to do what I got to do. I got to pay these bills. I don't, got those NBA, <laughs> I don't got those NBA checks coming in anymore, and I didn't make Grand Hill money, so I got to do whatever I can. Man, come on. So, what, I mean, back to the topic, talking about o Orlando, you two gentlemen know playing in, in, in home arenas, that, that crowd energy can propel teams to victory. Looking at what Orlando's done, especially in the second half of the season, how can that help them? Can that, can that push them to a victory tonight over Toronto? Yes, I mean, as long as they keep it relatively close and they come out there and they play well. Now, listen, the crowd can't play for you, but what the crowd can do is take you to another level. If you're on a run, they can give you that energy because they start, you start feeling the energy in the building, the crowd's cheering for you, and it just does something to you, and you feel 
extra oomph, a little bit extra hop in your step. Um, but you still have to come out there and give the crowd a reason to cheer. So Orlando has to come out there with energy. They have to make shots early on, give this crowd a reason to be in the game. And the guy we're watching right there, Vucevic, he has to come out and play well and be the all-star that he's been all season long. Is he feeling pressure? Yeah, to perform I think well. I think he is because the playoffs are a different game. Uh, the game slows down a little bit. Uh, teams are really more focused on the scouting report, taking away weaknesses. Um, sometimes they'll throw different looks at you. Uh, they really, really have your plays nailed down to a science because you've played against each other a couple of games in a row now. So the players are a little bit different animal. I think Vucevic is seeing that right now for the first time, but he's a great player, and I'm sure he'll bounce back tonight. Yeah, I think he'll bounce back. And look, he's, he had a great year, 20 points, 12 rebounds, uh, three assists, 52% from the field. The only other player in the league to, to have those kind of numbers, Giannis Antetokounmpo. So re really fantastic season. The team, what they've done the second half of the year. Uh, and the crowd, as you talked about, it's been, what is it, seven years mm -hmm. since they've it's been, been a while. the postseason? I live in Orlando, so I know, and the excitement there. So there's going to be uh, an energy. There's going to be uh, just a, a spirit in that building tonight uh, because the fans are excited. They're going to be there to support their team. Now, with all that said and done, you got a very experienced team in Toronto, and you're still going to have to go out and execute. You're going to have to play. You're going to have to make shots. You're going to have to figure out how to get Vooj involved. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to, have to play. I mean, they're going to give yeah. you a lift. They're going yeah. to get you excited, so on and so forth. But, you know, you're playing a really good team here in Toronto who's very capable, and they've made the right adjustments. Will Orlando be able to now make the necessary adjustments to go out to give themselves the best chance to win? Uh, but the crowd will help, but it will only help but so much. The game is all about adjustments, and that's one thing that the Portland Trailblazers did. They couldn't beat the Thunder during the regular season. They got pretty much swept four to nothing, but in the playoffs, it's a different story. 2-0, looking to go up 3-0. Game time, coming up on Game Time.